What you see in your children are leaves, are leaves and fruits. But that's not the root. Your husband was not like that. He was one of the best guys. But the moment he married you, he became a different person. The people who grew up with him, or who live with him, or who work with him, cannot believe your stories. When you tell them that this man is doing the same, he's humble, he's loving, he's caring, he's good to them, to everyone except you. He gives everyone except you. He takes care of everyone. But you, the wife, he doesn't. He, they can call him at 2 a.m. And he becomes the ambulance. But he can't give you a cup of water when you are sick in the same bed. Eh? Can I continue? Can I continue? Oh, I stop here. Sometimes you hear the testimony about your husband and you say, I think they're talking about someone else. It's not the one in this house. Everyone say, oh my God. Brother James, so understanding, so patient. And you say, are you sure? Is he the person I have in the house? As if there are two people beings. The one, in the, the one who is your husband. Different from the one people see outside. The issue. You're looking at the house. Someone say my father's house. Say, my father's house. No, there is the state of your father's house on earth. And there is what your father's house was supposed to be according to the plan of God. My past, amen. <laughs> Are you getting me? That is what your father's house is on earth. But there is what God God intended for it to be. And who will go in the spirit to call forth the destiny of that house to come to life, to, to be redeemed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I seek the redemption of the destiny of my father's house. I've given a prayer of deliverance. I seek the deliverance, the redemption of the destiny of my father's house, of this man's father's house, of this woman's father's house. You are now becoming prophetic. You are not looking at the man. You are looking at the God ordained destiny for this house. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I seek the redemption. Prophetic redemption of the of the destiny of my father's house. Of my father's house. Of, he, of my father's house. My wife's father's house. In the name of Jesus. If you are married, your father's house and your spouse's father's house came in covenant and came into a bond negative and positive. And it 
houses, the, how, the two houses are yoked together and if there's bondages, one chase a thousand and two chases ten thousand. So it was one thousand your father's house when you married it became ten thousand. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Some of the father's house. Some of the father's house. Now, listen. As you look at a man's success. The success of a man often times depends on how marriages were handled in the father's house. Because the covenant of marriage is the only covenant that bring out a human being. All the other covenants kill something. The only covenant that does not kill and bring life is the union of a man and a woman in marriage. All the other covenants, something has to die as a sacrifice. The covenant of marriage, something comes to life. It's the only covenant that brings forth a soul and a spirit. It doesn't kill. That's why the success of a man was ordained in the covenant of marriage. And marriage must be in the house. Must be with the house. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage each one of you here to make sure you go home before next Monday and read my book Freedom from Bondages of My Father's House and read that's a, that's a deliverance book it's a guide to deliverance Freedom from bondages of my father's house. The first thing you will see in the father's house. Marriages. The second thing. How authority was exercised. Let me tell you something very important. Most times what, denied, what denies you liberty and success in life. The, the abuse, abuse of authority in the father's house. One of the source of bondages in people's lives is when mothers became the authority and fathers became weaklings. And children because of ignorance, stumbled on authority. How could they respect their father who, were, who was not providing? So every need, they come to daddy and dad tells them, go to mom, go to your mother. So mother takes over the authority and become father. And that causes exchange and confusion in the spirit. And all those girls, wherever they will go, their husbands will lose everything. And all those boys, wherever they will marry, their wives will take over their lives. And their children always be messed up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone say, my father's house. Say, my father's house. Say, my father's house. Now, uh, can we move right now before we ascend the realms and 
Go back in the father's house. Go back in the father's house. And ask yourself. How was my father's house? How are marriages? Authorities. There was a, one that was praying for a sister. Who was she was giving, getting miscarriages? Many miscarriages. Almost nine. Almost nine. And she's a believer. So I was praying with her. And the Lord told me to ask a question. Who was your father? She said, so and so. I said, how was your relationship with him? She said, good. We pray. Then I said, I asked again. Your father and your mother. Who has influence on your life? She said, my mother. I said, why? He said, my father was a mess. He said, okay. If he was a mess, how was your relationship with him? He said, we could not even... Because he, he, he didn't do anything for us. I said, why you are having miscarriages? There is an accusation by an authority in the spirit. And that accusation, the demons, the evil spirits, every time you conceive, they bring accusations. Then she said, why, why can't God protect me. And I said, God is a God of justice. And then she told me a story. One day, the father told her, you know, she was around 19, 18. And the father was going for a certain meeting. And you know, there were those times when as a man, you want to work with your trophies. So the man wanted to go for a meeting with a daughter, very beautiful girl. She was in a boarding school, one of the best schools. So she wanted to go, he wanted to go with her daughter to this meeting where the elders are. So she told her, he told her the daughter, ah, please can you go with me? And she said, and she said let me ask mommy. So she went to the mom. Said, mommy, mommy, that is telling me to go with him. And my mother said in the hearing of the, the father, what if he raps you? You trust men? And she says, the father was standing and slowly went in on the chair. And began crying. She didn't say a word. Cried for a few minutes. Picked his small little bag. Walked away. And never returned home. And as children, they didn't take it serious. They didn't even take care. They didn't even fall up. They didn't know even where he went. Until he died. And that's when she said, said wait a minute, Pastor James. I said, even, even if I was the one, I would keep crying. So that man died crying. Died crying. And listen to what. And she tell me, she says, but Pastor James, Nagama name is Sumba James. Do you know? It's 
my grandmother's witchcraft that made my father a mess. Because when the mother married the father, the father was doing well. But the mother comes from a witchcraft family. So they used witchcraft to make this man a fool, lose all his wealth, their daughter to get the wealth. So their daughter became wealthy and the man became stupid. And then the woman, their mother, kept kept disgracing him. Disgracing him. Disgracing him. And that, the only thing he had remained with were his daughters. That's the only thing he was living for. And that day, when she said, you are going with him, what if he raps you? The man could not bear it. Most times we think about our mother's pain. But have you ever considered the tears of your father? Have you ever considered when that man could not buy himself a pair of shoes to take you to school only to return pregnant? He didn't, he shouted. He showed himself strong. But in the room alone, he could find him crying. And for you, you say, this is the man I love. You go with a boy, with a man, who has dishonored your father, and for you have continued in that dishonor. I want tonight to emphasize. Most times we look at the pain of the mother. But how about the tears of the father? Do you know what brings a curse on earth is the hearts of the fathers separating from the children. That's why he says in Malachi, when Elijah comes, he will, restore, he will restore the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers. I don't know why I'm saying this. But there may be tears accusing you and God cannot bypass those tears. Amen. There are many people I know women I know right now who have destroyed the man who is the father of their children. They take 80% of their salary. But the man has nothing today because he has to pay child care. There's this young man, the father, the man was imprisoned because he could not pay for years. You could not pay child, 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 child care. And when he began working, he was always getting only 15% of his money. And the rest was going for this man. And after graduating, the mother boldly comes and says, and tells the man, tells the young man, by the way, he's not your father. But he was the one around who I could get your money to take you to school. And the man said, I was, I was taken to prison. I lost my life. I didn't do anything for me. All the money I was, was going to this boy. And now you have told me he's not my son. You know what happened to that man? He, he became mentally sick. Up to day, he's a madman. He's homeless. He has never recovered his soul. 
And now the sons don't want, they didn't want even to, to tell the people that that madman that mad is their father. And when I was praying for one of them, he was telling me, Pastor James, James, every six months, we find ourselves in prison. Sometimes things we don't understand. And I just look, the tears of that man. He is not your father. But he was denied a life because of the wickedness of your mother. Please tell me amen. The father's house. We're looking at the pains most times of the wombs. But there is a wicked thing in the father's house. The tears of the father. In my language they say. The tears of a man. Comes from far. The tears of a man. A man can look at you and he doesn't know he's crying. He doesn't know he's crying. You're the one who tells him you're crying. And he will say, I'm not crying, yet he's crying. I'm not crying, yet he's crying. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. Am I crying? Yet he's crying. He's crying. Crimes against fathers. A few have been wicked. But many have been destroyed by the women, the mothers who they loved. And some are here in this meeting. Some are watching right now. Some of you are the children. What a night. Hallelujah. 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 You know, you need to understand that Spiritual laws are different from the natural laws. They are very different. And you need to know how to approach spiritual issues, especially, especially authorities. Amen. Amen. If you, someone is asking, how about fathers? How about, how about men who do not take care of their children? So should you dishonor the authority because they have not taken their responsibility? That's not your business. That's the business of God. Okay. Let me put that on side. The father's house. One. Marriages. Two. Authorities. Three. Battles. Entalo. Battles in the father's house. Entalo munyumba ya tata. Including. Battles of wombs. Entalo ezenda. Battles of wombs. Battles of destiny. Some of the issues we see in people's lives. Their consequences. Effects of battles in the father's house. Many of us we were caught in between. Missiles. Misa is in this family against this family. The father wants this, the mother wants this. This family, father goes to witchcraft. Another one goes to divination. And as they are fighting, the children are caught in between. 
witchcraft revenge consequences of bloodshed attacks because of betrayal in the father's house hallelujah hallelujah Betrayal and disappointment. And the others are caught in the battles of the father's house. And in the battles, a lot is lost. Because While there were these battles, each one of them brought armies. Different armies. Chifalu. The, the, the roads. <laughs> brought different power. Misamba. Evil spirits. In order to protect themselves. To, to protect themselves but from their enemies. But what was brought for protection after finishing the protection it began demanding payment. <laughs> Am I on somebody? It was brought for protection. Your mother brings powers to protect her marriage. To protect her man. But after protecting the man, a time comes when she doesn't need to protect the man. But these powers are still present. So what do they do? They begin demanding demanding are you getting me someone say my father's house say my father's house by the way hey, remember it's ascension I'm not going to go into it but by the way let me ask you those sitting here those watching online, those on TV, let me ask a question. Give me a report. How is your father's house? Like they came to Nehemiah and told him, Jerusalem, the city was burnt. How is your father's house? If someone called you today, who has been away for years, and said, James, uh, how are you? How is our father's house? How is our father's house? How, what report do you give? How is my father's house? Hello? Hello? Ask your neighbor, how is your father's house? Okay, let's walk there. Let's walk, let's walk there right now. Have we arrived? In the father's house? Some of you are saying, it's not there. It's not there. Father's house is not there. Some of you are saying it's in ruins. It's broken down. Broken down. But my father's sons all wasted. My mother's daughters. My father's daughters. All. Bona. Scattered. Basa sani. Others disappeared. Abamu babula. They did not return home. Tebadda waka. Even we don't know their graves. Tetumanyina antana zabu wezi. Even we can't trace them. Tetusobula na kubano nyere zaku. My father's house. Enyumba ya tata. My father's house. Enyumba ya chitange. Someone say my father's house. Wabi wagambe enyumba ya chitange. Before I become the intercessor. Nga sinafuka mwega yuza. Of the nations. Uwama wanga. I have a responsibility. Ninovu vuna anjiziwa. For my father's house. Kuru enyumba ya chitange. Ladies here. Awa chala bali wano. There's a day. Wali woru naku. When those children will ask you. Awana urubali kubuza. Mami. Mami. 
Where is my father's house? You raised me. But that's where I come from. How is my father's house? And you know, sometimes, some of you, you saw, you tested the glory days of your father's house. The days it was a family. The days you were you were a family. We were family. The day you were the honor, you were the envy of everyone. The day you were taken to the best schools. The day you were the loving father. Until at something happened. The father's house was scattered. Father's house was broken down. The walls destroyed. The children scattered. All you have. Those good days in memory. Now. The father's house scattered. Hello. 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 Praise the Lord. If you don't answer this question today, there may be a day when you have to face it. You know, here we can be in church. There is a day we hand you over to your people. We hand you over to your people. You have been a good intercessor. You have been a good pastor. A good elder. Now that your value, we don't, you, you are useless. Where are your people? We return you to your people. We call them. Come and pick him. We call them. You know, sometimes the church folks will just give How are you? But on that bed, it's your wife, your children, your people that remain. But you scattered them. Oh, they were scattered. There's a man now you're saying. Where are my children? Where are my people? Where is my father's house? Where is my father's house? Oh, I'm born again. My father is Jesus. Wait a minute. There's a day your father is Jesus. There is a day when there are things you can't answer. When your children are asking you who are we? What happened? Someone said, my father's house. Say, almighty God. I cry for the redemption of the destiny of my father's house. I said, when a man comes to you and they tell you they are doing this, they hate me at work, I don't get money, before you ask other ask the house. When they are, their story does not add up. In deliverance, ask the blood of Jesus to redeem the destiny of that house. Ask the blood of Jesus to redeem the destiny of that house. Did you hear what I'm saying? Ask the blood of Jesus to redeem the destiny of that house. Don't look at the man. Don't look at the woman before you. Understand what is going on in this person. The root is the house. 
Hallelujah. 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 You know, friends, here, let me tell you. I have seen that in the world. Men on fire. Set us for God. Pursuing things of God. In the peak of their ministry. The issues of the Father's house. Pull them down. And they end in disgrace. That's why this revival we are through is, is dealing with every affair of our lives that when we ascend when we have read a place like where we are going then we are blameless. When we are blameless. I said when we are blameless. I've been thinking today. I was praying today. In, in the evening I was I left here and went to pray. And this conviction kept coming. James. James. You are leading the people. You are teaching them. You are opening realms for them. But are they blameless? And I thought, I said, they are repenting. No. Isn't there something? in the foundation that can be a, an accusation against them. Can you clear that before you take them into higher realms of prayer? Because you are stirring up realms. But check out Check these people. Help them deal with it. Give them the prayer. You have prayed for your life to be where you are. You know, because the question is, maybe you can ask James, with a kind of life, with a kind of bondage, with a kind of background, how have you been able to reach where you are? How has you come to the place of authority, of liberty, and how have you been able to stand these 24 years in the Lord? This is what I'm giving you. Basics. Ascending for deliverance. As if you are to ascend the issues of your foundations must be dealt with here. The prayers I'm giving you. Say blood of Jesus. Say blood of Jesus. Redeem the destiny Amagenda. of my house Yange. and my father's house in the name of Jesus. And I want to tell you friends listening you may be the kinsman redeemer of your father's house. You may be the part that is God wants to use to redeem all that which was sold. I want to tell you this. I gave you something recently of appearing in the courts of heaven to report crimes in your foundations and ask God to cancel and separate you from the initiations of your father's house and your bloodlines. Say, Lord, I ask you, I ask 
to cancel and separate me from the initiations. Now, as I pray this prayer, there's a woman watching. Your son is going to be freed from the initiation of his father. Your husband is going to be freed Free from the initiations of the many wives of his father. You know, some people, your husband, found himself caught in battles as women were fighting for his father. Your son or your husband, or you yourself, you may have found yourself in the midst of crossfire as women were fighting for the father. The the first person to hit was this son who was supposed to be a heir. And today, afflictions, infirmities, failures are in his life because many multiple battles are being fought on his soul and is overwhelmed, tired, torn, Crushed, fragmented. Hallelujah. 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 Are you blessed? Are you blessed? So, now listen, the prayer I'm praying. I prayed it many times about the Lord canceling and nullifying and separating me from the multiple initiations. Some of us initiations were done every year on your behalf. You know like Hannah every year she could bring an offering and a new effort and a new, a new a garment for Samuel every year. That was to God. But also there are others who every year they have to appear in a shrine for you. Even when you're not there. Are you here? Are you here? Mine was in a pot. And every year, could go to that pot in that forest to fulfill a vow. That even when I got born again, they were still giving an an offering on my behalf. So I found this girl born again. Love the Lord. We love the Lord. So let's get married. Planned the wedding. I didn't have money. She went to her father. The father gave me money to pay the dowry. Your laughing. The father sent money for me to pay dowry. Because I didn't have the money. Hmm. When your father's house is in a mess. So I pay the dowry. We do the introduction. Ten days to the wedding. The girl died. She died. Ten days to the wedding. We had the introduction. 
We say let's wait. We have to go to shopping. Get our good clothes and what? The father had, had funded everything. Her father. My work was just to appear on the wedding. Money, everything paid. The night she died, she got a dream. An old woman was chasing her. And the woman chased her the whole night. She told me towards morning, she was tired of running. And the woman found her, beat her. She came out of the dream. She came to me in the next day. Said James, I had a dream. I had the dream also that night. I was born again. This woman appeared to me, an old woman, and asked me, husband, are you leaving me? Where she was, she was getting another dream also. So when she came to me, she told me her dream. I didn't tell her my dream. Because me, I knew what it meant. I knew. I'm born again. But the marriage that was done on me when I was one day old has not been cancelled. But the people I was with in church by that time had told me when you are born again you don't need deliverance. You have delivered already and I believed it. I believed it. I lived it. I wouldn't have gone through the pain I went through. Because that day, when she told me that dream, I knew what she was talking about. That afternoon, she, the place where the old woman hit her in a dream, she began feeling pain. By 7.15 in the evening, I was, we were driving her to Mulago Hospital. As we entered the gate, she looked at me and died in my hands. I was born again. I would expect the Lord. Are you getting me? Ten days to the wedding. One week and three days. Everything set. What had been planned for the wedding all worked on the funeral. And I want to tell people don't say things you don't understand. Especially you pastors and you preachers. Sometimes it's an insult to tell me that things are not in my life when I go through the pain every night. It's an insult to tell me, ah, no, don't, you may not be with the same thing. Don't insult the people in pain. Don't insult the people that are oppressed every night. Because they told me, once born again, you don't need deliverance. And I believe that. I thought I'd been delivered. And you know, that day, I remember that place. Every time I pass that place, I remember it. As you end into Mulago Hospital, she was sitting, we were sitting in the car. Because she was, the doctor told us, rush the main hospital. And she looked at me with this eye like saying, you, James, you know what's going on. I, I remember that you know what's going on. And like, then she died. In my hands. What killed her? Accusation. I was married to a 60 year old witch. And my pastors had not helped me break free from that initiation. And 
I still carry that pain. Are you getting what I'm talking about? I've, and that's why I'm emphasizing you to take serious these prayers, this consecration. Make sure that the Lord sorts out the issues of initiations. If you don't know or you feel you can't, stop whatever you're doing and look for help. Don't be in denial. Don't just deny. Don't hide your head in the sun. It may be too late. There's someone listening right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That today, I said you look at the redemption and you look at the cancelling, the nullifying of initiations being taken you know, many of us without our consent we were sold. And I'm not doing a Bible study tonight. I'm giving you basics. Just basics. The father, the redeeming of the destiny the dismantling of initiations. That's when you disconnect from the strong men. That's the third thing you look at in deliverance. The strong man. The strong men. The entities that were authorities. If they have not been bound and they've not been disarmed, they may be always empowering spirits. And I'm not here for a debate. I'm not here for a debate. Oh, you know, Pastor, you know, I'm not here for a debate. I'm here for treatment. I'm here for helping someone. If you say, I don't agree with that, it's okay. No one has forced you on this place. But those that are saying, Pastor James, James, I need help for my partner, for my spouse. The destiny of the father's house. Initiations. Initiations may be in the family, in the school, even in some places you call church. Some spiritual places, the spiritual contacts you've had. Some friends may have illegally initiated us. Some boyfriends, boyfriend, girlfriends, girlfriend, with the purpose of initiating in order to exchange destinies. They exchange your life. You, know, you may not understand this technology, but for, for us who understand the spirit, let me show you something about exchanges. Forget about this, the dead child and the and uh, the, what they call that story about exchange. But there is another exchange in the book of Ezekiel. Please turn with me in the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 13. Look at this. Verse 17. Ezekiel 13.17. O you son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own hearts. Where do people prophesy from in our days? In the church, they prophesy. 
So they are, these are church folks. But they prophesy out of their hearts. And he says, prophesy, prophesy against them. And say, thus says the Lord God. Woe to the women who seal magic bands upon all wrists. Can I have the scripture on the screen, please? People need to read this. Ezekiel chapter 13, and we are on verse 18 now. Ezekiel chapter 13, and we are on verse Guys, pick, pick up this up so fast. And I want to be, don't sleep. Because this night determines a lot. Even you in the control room. At the time has come. Not just to be in the control room. But also to be serious with your deliverance. You know, I'm telling you it's very unfortunate and painful to waste the prime of your life. And then in your old age you realize what you are supposed to do in your 30s you did not do it because you took life careless. You were in a deliverance ministry you were in the church and you thought things are okay until you were in your 50s, 60s and you, your life has been wasted. So you better take every minute today, every minute of this consecration, serious. Some of us will look at the years, I look at my, my first 10 years in Christianity. 10 years as a Christian, 10 years in church, still in bondages, still in, in misery. Because the people there gave me a kind of Christianity that does not bring liberty. Amen. Amen. You know they kept telling us claim and take it. Go in the parking lot and claim your parking space. Go on the car and claim it. Look at a beautiful girl and claim her. We claimed and claimed and claimed and wasted 10 years. The only thing could show Shame. Shame. That's why I, mean, I take this delivery serious. I know what it means to be a minister of God. You preach about a great God. But all is showing in your life is shame. Are you getting me? Shame. At 35, I was not yet married. Without a home. But born again. I became born again at 24. At 35. I didn't have a house. I didn't have a home. No married. No hope of getting married. I had seen girls die when I'm dating them. Or they get mad. Or they get crippled. Even before I got born again. And I come to church, they give me a painkiller. They plaster my life, but not seek my deliverance. Okay? And while we are serving these men, they kept prospering themselves driving good cars dressing well traveling nations and they kept telling us God it was pain to us you are serving a man who is driving the most 
expensive car, living in a mansion, for 10 years you are serving under him, but you can't even afford a pair of shoes, but you are praying to the same God. And they don't, they were not bothered, but they were happy that actually when you tell them Bubagamba. I want to go and do what God tells me to do they instead curse you because they want to remain in their bondage we came from the bondage of witchcraft now they have put us in the bondage of the men of God yes many people are in the bondage of the men of God they can't think for themselves manipulated every Every day. And these men of God who we thought were going to show us God, we just find out now they were serving a foreign God. They were initiating us into water spirits, into marine altars, into other altars where they went to get powers. They were not showing us God. They were initiating us into immorality. We came from witchcraft and the man to show us God is also initiating us in pride in familiar spirits in the occult they have buried skulls on the altar they are worshipping the snakes but they, you know may God have mercy I am not accusing but may God have mercy for to the, those souls that have been trapped in the bondages of the people the false prophets who have who have trapped souls look at these women thank you my son God bless you. You also saw. Give me a seed. Uh -huh. Are you getting me? God bless you. That's why people here. Maybe some of you who have been in these, those places. You find it strange that here I don't try to control anyone. I don't try to make you under me and subdue you. Because many of you, when you left your other families and what? And it came to what you thought was the house of God. More of your soul was trapped there. Yes. The curses, the initiations, the defilement, most of it happened in a place where you thought is the house of God. Are you getting me? I was praying for a, a pastor who recently lost a wife. The wife was an intercessor. But her death and the death of his ministry. He brought a man. He thought he's a man of God in the nation. When he stood on the altar, a spirit was released. Let he realize this man on every altar he goes, pastors lose their wives and their children. So he sacrifices children of fell ministers sacrifice the wives of pastors that are serving around him. That's why today is our deliverance. Okay. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. Thus says the Lord, War to the women who see magic bands upon our wrists and make veils for the heads of persons of every stature in the hunt for souls. Will you hunt down souls belong to my people and keep your own souls alive? You have profaned me among my people for a handful of barley and for a piece of bread, putting to death, look at that, putting to death what? 
souls who should not die and keeping alive souls who should not live by your, by your lying to my people who listen to lies. So, they keep those who are supposed to die they keep them alive. Those who are supposed to live, they kill them. Exchange. Many of you watching right now, you are not the person you're supposed to be. An exchange happened on your life by an authority you submitted to. Evil exchange in the father's house. Evil exchange in church. They saw the anointing on you and the grace upon you you and manipulated you to surrender yourself to them only to exchange and replace. And today you are shadow. You are shadow. Today, the anointing left. The money left. The revelation left. The zeal left. Now you are, you are there. You just move because you are, you are not yourself. You are, you are not who you are supposed to be. A shadow. And, but I'm not talking to somebody right now. And you're saying, what happened? I was running a good race. God was using mightily. I was blessed. I was seeing in the spirit. But what happened? Look at me now. I can't even pray five minutes. Your soul was exchanged. I might tell somebody right now. They exchange souls. The soul hunters. Soul merchants. Are in the church. Through lying prophecies. Using the spirit of Azazel. And Tammuz. And Baal. To blind and take destinies. Their master, Leviathan, pays them for every soul they trap. They become famous while lives are destroyed. To the extent of setting up people as sacrifices. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You know, you, some, let me tell you this. You can be walking, but you are already sacrificed. You are, they are just waiting for the moment, for, but you were sacrificed. A father sacrifices. You remain walking, and they turn you into a host into an altar. Their altar. You become an altar, a host. Because you are sacrificed. Listen, your son, the father may have sacrificed him. But today, that sacrifice is dismissed. That act is dismissed. I stand as a father in authority to destroy, to nullify, to dismiss, to cancel that sacrifice. You will not be a sacrifice. You will not be a sacrifice. For you will never be a sacrifice. I hereby destroy. I hereby destroy and condemn any act that was done to sacrifice you and your children and your destiny in the name of Jesus.
I said le kataro shika. Everyone who says, Pastor, I think I may have been sacrificed. I think my son is being sacrificed. I think my daughter is being sacrificed. Stand on your feet and say, Lord, Father, I agree with your servant. I agree with your apostle today for destroying, for nullifying, for reversing, for rooting out any act, any decree, and any order of sacrificing my love to the evil one. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The orders that decrease, that decrease the vows, the agreement, sacrificing my children, my life to the evil one, be nullified, be rooted out, be judged and be condemned in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Whatever was done in ignorance, subduing me, initiating me tonight, pray. I have allowed you to pray in the name of Jesus. I have, I'm standing as a covering over your life while you're doing that prayer. While you're doing that prayer of releasing your destiny, your children from decrease, orders, orders, decrease, vows, vows that were intended to sacrifice your life to exchange, to exchange your life to exchange your life in the name of Jesus 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 lift your voice and pray Nullify them, my Father and my God. I ask you tonight, every act, every decree, every order that was meant to exchange, to exchange my destiny, the destiny of my Father's house, the destiny of my children, the anointing, the call that was upon my life tonight. I ask you, my Father and my God, let them be nullified, let them be nullified, let them be nullified. Omukisa,omukisa,munyumbayachitange,echawanyisua,matarakadidia,omunapi,omwobulimba,okulagula,okwobulimba,okwanyisa,namakenda wange,webioto,wenatekewa,lukwata,weyawambira,amakenda kange
to nullify, to exchange my destiny. Tonight, I ask you, my Father and my God, let it be cancelled, let it be nullified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My Father and my God, pray, pray, pray. Everything that was done, everything that was done, everything that has been standing as a spiritual you to hinder you, to hinder you from fulfilling that destiny of God upon your life. Let it be nullified, let it be nullified, let it be nullified, let it be nullified. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Marazi Kataraka de Dede, Shikatarama Kosiere Badibia, Riba Baba Baba Baba, Ramande Legaziere Badibia, Raba Baba Baba, Rosi Kataraka de Dian de Bobo Zanada, Rebezi Kataraba Baba, every decree, every order that which was exchanged, that which was decreed upon my mother's children tonight, upon the children of my mother's womb tonight. Night. Oh my God and my Father, let it be cancelled, let it be nullified, let it be cancelled, let it be nullified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let Satara Gadidia la Baba Robo Zika Tarava Gadidia. Everything that was activated in the spiritual realm to hinder me from fulfilling that destiny, the call. Oh, upon my life, my Father and my God, I ask you tonight, let it be cancelled, 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 let it be cancelled. Let it be cancelled. Let it be cancelled. Every evil altar. Every evil altar. Every evil altar. Where my destiny was exchanged. Tonight I ask. Tonight I ask. Oh God, my Father and my God, judge the altar. Judge the altar. Judge the altar and free the captives. The captives. The captives of that altar. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Altars which seemed like churches and destinies were exchanged. Destinies were exchanged. Calling. We are exchanged, anointings we are exchanged. Father, tonight we ask, we ask, we ask that you judge, you judge, you judge those evil altars and release and release the captives of those altars and release my father and my God. I ask you tonight, I ask you tonight, every evil altar, every evil altar, every evil altar, where destinies, where destinies were exchanged, where destinies were captured, Mara Zika through evil prophecies, through evil prophecies, points of contact that have been lying on those altars. Father, we ask tonight, tonight, judge, 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 judge the altars, release the captives of those altars, judge the altars, release the captives of those altars, judge the altars, release the captives of those altars, judge the altars, release the captives of those altars, my father and my God. I ask, I ask for the destiny of my father's house that was exchanged, that was exchanged on an evil altar. Father, my father and my God, Marriages that were exchanged. My father, my God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The marriages in my father's house. The marriages in my father's house. Marriages in my father's house, Lisa. Whatever was done to hinder marriages in my father's house, Linda. My father, my God, every kind of initiation that was done on our behalf of God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every initiation of the children of my mother's womb. 